And welcome back to End Times Prophecy News. I will be your host, Brother Jim, reporting here from Red State Watcher. Look what the First Lady Melania Trump did for the first time today. Melania Trump hosted guests at the White House for the first time as First Lady of the United States. Class. Prime Minister Netanyahu and Miss Sarah Netanyahu receive a warm welcome to the White House from POTUS Donald Trump and FLOTUS Melania Trump. <laughs> She's so much shorter. That's fantastic. You're not familiar. Sorry, I'm putting your name. Thank you. Thank you. Would you want to be here so I No sound here, bro. Don't know what to say. Here we go. Back to the silent films. Take those pictures. Thank you. Amazing. What a nice looking POTUS and FLOTUS we have, including Prime Minister Netanyahu and his wife. Breaking news, CNN just got banned again? Venezuela has suspended CNN in Spanish after an expose was aired about the government providing fake passports. Not only that, but uh, Donald Trump uh, put sanctions on the vice president. I believe it's the vice president for dealing drugs in, out of Venezuela. Venezuela suspends CNN in Spanish, shutting off news channel after a report on fake, fake passports. Boy, CNN, you're just really losing everywhere, aren't you? Justin Ashton Kutcher just delivered a powerful testimony before Congress, and it's viral. Today to defend the right to pursue happiness. It's a simple... No can I just say, um, it's easy for you to pursue happiness. You're a Hollywood star making millions of dollars a year. Notion, the right to pursue happiness. It's bestowed upon all of us by our constitution. Every citizen of this country has the right to pursue it. And I believe that it, it, it is incumbent upon us as citizens of this nation, as Americans, to bestow that right upon others, upon each other, and upon the rest of the world. Yes, that's what Donald Trump is uh, bringing back. Go ahead, continue there, Ashton. But the right to pursue happiness for so many is stripped away. It's raped. It's abused. It's taken by force, fraud, or coercion. It is sold 
for the momentary happiness of another. What are you getting? This is about the time uh, when I start talking about politics that the internet trolls tell me to stick to my day job. Uh, So I'd like to talk about my day job. My day job is as the chairman and the co-founder of Thorn. We build software to fight human trafficking and the sexual exploitation of children. And that's our core mission. My other day job is that of the father of two, a two-month-old and a two-year-old. And as part of that job that I take very seriously, I believe that it is my effort to defend their right to pursue happiness and to ensure a society and government that defends it as well. As part of my anti-trafficking work, I've met victims in Russia. I've met victims in India. I've met victims that have been trafficked from Mexico, victims in New York and New Jersey and all across our country. I've been on FBI raids where I've seen things that no person should ever see. I've seen video content of a child that's the same age as mine being raped by an American man that was a sex tourist in Cambodia. And this child was so conditioned by her environment that she thought she was engaging in play. I've been on the other end of a phone call from my team asking for my help because we had received a call from the Department of Homeland Security telling us that a seven-year-old girl was being sexually abused and that content was being spread around the dark web and she had been being abused and they'd watched her for three years and they could not find the perpetrator. Asking... Ashton, I'm sure that's a very nice uh, speech, but the only thing is, is that you need to find out where it's coming from in order to stop it. Obviously, that's what you're here for. And your government coup, the one that's trying to take down Trump, is the core of that problem. The government leaders of the world are the ones that are doing this. Us, for help. We were the last line of defense. An actor and his foundation were the potential last line of defense. That's my day job, and I'm sticking to it. Okay. The last part was a little corny, though. It was pretty good. Analysis. Is Russia deliberately trying to start an arms race with Trump? It appears as though the recent missile test could be an attempt from Russia to force the U.S. into an arms race. Is Russia deliberately trying to start an arms race with Trump? Eh, kind of doubt it, but... So the story that the mainstream media missed is obvious. The timing of the deployment. Why would Russia wait until Trump took office to deploy a missile system that violated arms treaties that had been tested extensively for over eight years? The simplest explanation here comes from Trump's own words. President-elect Donald Trump suggested Friday that he is willing to engage in an open arms race, insisting that the United States will surpass its rivals and outlast them all in a push for global weapons dominance. Let it be an arms race. We will outmatch them at every pass and outlast them all, Trump said in a statement to Morning Joe host Mika Brzezinski. You know, the one who just ended up... uh, boycotting and, and not inviting uh, Sally Ann, uh, Kellyanne Conway to her show anymore. Yeah. Trump's assertion comes the day after he tweeted that the United States must greatly strengthen and expand its nuclear capability until such time as the world comes to its senses regarding nukes. But why would Russia want a renewed arms race? Again, the answer is simple. They are planning to use the same strategy that the U.S. used to defeat the Soviet Union, force the adversary to overspend. What it's, while it's true that Russia cannot match the U.S. dollar for dollar in military spending, they hardly need to. The U.S. is currently $20 trillion in debt, not counting Social Security, pensions, others off the books, unfunded liabilities, running an over $500 billion annual deficit with a DOD or Defense uh, Department of Defense that spends over $600 billion annually. 
This doesn't even take into account wasteful programs like the F-35 and the Zumwalt class destroyer, which has wasted billions in Department of Defense dollars while delivering suspect at best capabilities. Russia doesn't need to outspend the U.S. and deploying a few key systems, forcing Trump's hand and starting up another arms race would force the nation to spend funds it can ill afford to spend. And it's not as though dropping out of an arms treaty is something new or groundbreaking. George W. Bush pulled the U.S. out of the anti-ballistic missile treaty in 2002 so that the U.S. could spend a fortune on the THAAD missile defense system, which has a questionable, at best, record at destroying only a very limited number of incoming ballistic warheads. Any protests lodged by the U.S. or the rest of the world of Russia's treaty violation will likely fall on deaf ears and could even lead to Russia pulling out of the 1987 treaty altogether. Meanwhile, Russia is doing whatever it can to force the U.S. into spending an ever-increasing amount on national defense, which is why it makes perfect sense that Russia has waited until just after Trump took office to deploy the system. Whether or not this deployment leads to a renewed arms race See, remains to be seen, but it sure appears as though Putin, Putin is trying to goad Trump into one. Yeah, possible, very possible. Thank you for listening.